I want my second wife to have a son or two. Okay, my second wife must have a son or two because I'm not having no more children. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. So I want my second wife to already have a son or two who don't have their father. Okay, I want all of our sons to have their father, right? But we have black men who don't have fathers. So if there's a black woman with some sons, I want to raise a son. I've never had a chance to raise a son. I want to help raising us. I want to help raising a son. So if you got a son or two, you will be given privilege in the Dr. Umar wifey selection. Send those wife resumes in. Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com. I didn't want to speak on it, but I just wanted to uh, get your thoughts on Dr. Nipsey. Oh, Nipsey Hustle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because it's looking very, it doesn't look like no regular gang stuff. No, 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 no. I believe, I believe yes, that Nipsey Hustle murder was a professional, professionally orchestrated hit. Okay. And I yes, believe sir. that, just like the white man always does, he finds somebody jealous of us. He always uses a black hand. It's a white command, but it's a black hand. It's a white command, but it's a black hand. And I believe that they found someone who was jealous of Nipsey, brother who rolled with him. It's always the Judas factor. It is always the Judas factor. It is always the Judas factor. And I believe they simply used him to carry out the hit. Okay, it was a black hand that pulled the trigger, but it was a white command. And I am still of the opinion that it may have been a music industry assassination. I believe that Nipsey Hustle's, I believe that Nipsey Hustle's vertical integration music strategy to sell and distribute his music caused a lot of panic in the music industry. And if Nipsey Hustle been able to integrate his vertical integration music distribution and sales platform, that could have cost the music industry billions of dollars, especially if he turned other black artists onto that vertical integration platform. The music industry could not afford for Nipsey Hussle to implement his vertical integration distribution platform. They could not. That would have totally cut the majors out of the money. And I believe the music industry, just like they took out Biggie in LA, took out Pac in LA, they killed Michael Jackson, they killed Sam Cooke, they killed Jimi Hendrix, they killed Prince, they killed Whitney Houston. I believe the music industry killed Nipsey. Until I get a better explanation, I believe it was the music industry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because it, it doesn't look, it seems very regular. And one more question, Dr. Kamala, before you get off. Uh, I've been following you for a minute, sir. And I love your talking points. I hear the ADOS talking. I wonder why you guys are not. Of course, you don't have to work with each other. You both doing your own work, both moving forward. That's the main thing. But it's about, like, I guess why you don't get a nod from each other because a lot of your talking points about the immigrants coming over, taking our place, and y'all voting for this, that's basically what they're doing from okay. what I've seen so far, but it's not like the vice of the, the, the continental Africans because it's some of them that's aligning with it and some that's not, but I just want to get your take on that. Why do you feel like they're, that there's a, they're an opposition with us as a whole because of what they're trying to do? Okay, okay. Uh, ADOS, I respect them. Okay, our issues are ideological, they're not personal. Our okay. issues are ideological, I'm not personal. But I would beg to differ with your point that we have a lot in common because we don't. Um, I don't see African immigrants as any problem for me whatsoever. There are only 3 million African immigrants in the United States. There are only 3 million African immigrants in the United States. Not to mention the fact that we are all from Africa. We are all of African origin. So those Africans that are in America, those 3 million immigrant Africans, they might be my cousins. They might be my aunts and uncles. We may literally be from the same village back home. We may literally be from the same clan. We may li literally be from the same ethnic nation. Why would I separate myself from my own blood, kith, and kin? Why would I do that in order to ingratiate myself to my slave master so I can beg him for reparations. That doesn't make any sense. The reparation struggle does not require us to disassociate from our African identity. The reparation struggle does not need us to disidentify from our African brothers and sisters around the world. 
if and I say one thing quick, sure, please, just but let me let me finish, let me finish, and then I'm gonna let you respond. I'm not done, but I'm I got you, brother. I'm gonna let you respond. So that's number one. There is nothing in the reparations movement strategically that requires you to disidentify from your Africanity. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Had I not known who was behind this movement, I would have clearly assumed that it was a CIA front group. Because at a time when when Ghana is reaching out to Africans in the diaspora, at a time when most African nations are reaching out to Africans in the diaspora, we are dealing with the quadricentennial. We are dealing with the year of return. We are dealing with pan-African consciousness at the highest level it's been since the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey was with us. And then all of a sudden, with Africans uniting all around the world, a movement pops up out of nowhere and says, disassociate from your brothers and sisters because they're robbing you of your opportunity to get resources from your slave master. That's ridiculous. And let me say why it's ridiculous before I let you respond. Mom, who has stolen more from black people? African immigrants or the homosexual movement? Who has stolen more from black people? African immigrants or the illegal Mexican immigrants? Who has stolen more from black people? African immigrants or the feminists? Who have stolen more from black people? African immigrants or white women? Who have stolen more from black people? African immigrants or the racist criminal justice system? Or the racist mental health system? Or the racist education system? Or the racist economic system? African immigrants are not my problem. White supremacy is my problem. There was one slave trade, so there should be one reparations in anyone that wants to divide me against my brothers and sisters, whether they are from the Caribbean, Bahamas, I will see you in November, whether they are from South America, Brazil, I will see you in November, whether they are from Europe, Brussels, Belgium, I will see you September 6th, whether they are in Africa, Senegal, I will see you August, Zambia, I will see you October. Uh, where else am I going? In? Ghana, I will see you in July. Anyone who wants to separate me from our brothers and sisters around the world is an enemy of Pan-Africanism. They are an enemy of my ancestors and they are an enemy of African people. There is no way I can sit down at a table and collaborate with any organization that seeks to cause tribalism amongst the African family. Your response. Yes, sir. I I'm in I'm in the, really the most diverse city in America right now. And Nigerians, that little African prison's been in Houston for a minute. They always been isolated from us. Always, always, you know, they never aligned themselves with us. Always been isolated towards us. They always had their own thing going on. So, and it wasn't that we pushed them away because, mama, like, like, I grew up in a non-denominational church. It's Christian. We all love everybody. But and we, so it wasn't like we was pushing the continent for Africans away. They never... They never cohabitate. They never really fellowship with us in no aspect of life. So that's why I don't. I understand what you're saying. If more of them thought like that, they come over here or that's in America, it would be great. But a lot of Africans come. They don't think like you think. They're they not, they not saying what you're saying. I agree so with you. I agree with you. I agree with you, my brother. Do, but they don't come over here and do. They come over here and allow themselves for white supremacy. Right. I agree. So I agree like, with uh, you. I agree with you that you have African coons in the United States. I agree with you. But you also, yes, but, but hear me, hear me. You're correct. There are African coons in the United States who think they're better than you, who think they're different from you, who think they don't want anything to do with you. You are correct. But guess what? You have African-American coons who think they're better than Africans, who don't want anything to do with Africans. The point that I am making is that what you are describing is true for all African groups. We all have those reactionary Negroes within our community. But guess what? We also have progressive-minded Africans in America. I know this because I work with them. You got progressive African Americans. You got progressive African Caribbeans. You got progressive African Europeans. You got progressive African South Americans. Why are we judging an entire group of our family by the actions of a few. Do you understand how hard it is for an African to get into America in the first place? Are you aware that America only allows a certain type of African to come to this country in the first place? Are you aware that when slavery ended, one of the first acts of Congress was to limit the amount of Africans who could come into America? 
America ain't crazy about African immigrants. They're simply exploiting them to build relationships with African countries so they can steal the resources. They're simply exploiting them so they can use their intellectual talent to build America's corporations. That's all that is. It is an intellectual brain drain. The Africans in America are not representative of the African consciousness on the continent, my brother. Don't judge a continent of a billion people by the actions of three million. Don't judge a continent of a billion people by the actions of three million. We cannot afford to play divide and conquer at this stage of our struggle. We need every last one of us. World War III will be a war of African people against everybody else. We're going to have to fight the Chinese, the Arabs, the Mexicans, the East Indians, the Anglo-Saxons all at once. World War III is a fight to bring back African global supremacy. That's why we need all of our brothers and sisters. The ones that are coons, we can leave them alone, but we got to make sure we not throwing away good people. We got to make sure we not throwing away good people, my brother. Please rethink that position. It, 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 it's, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than yes, that. Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, just one thing was, uh, Dr. Kumar, just whatever, uh, put that Houston in your schedule, sir. That was it. That's it. Oh, yes, sir. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen, yes, black sir. man. We're going to make it happen. Appreciate you. That's a great question. That's a great question. Here's how I would respond. I'm not totally against automation, okay? But I think we need to evaluate it and limit our usage of it, okay? We are fundamentally a collectivist people as Africans. We are fundamentally- yeah, We're consumers and not producers, yeah. Yes, but we're also collectivists, meaning we do things as a family. We're collective. We do everything as a family, for the benefit of the family. Because of that, I think that we would largely not employ automation on a large scale because it would eliminate jobs. So for example, if I opened up a car wash, being a Pan-Africanist, I would have to hire our people as opposed to using the machine. The machine would save me money, but it would rob the community of its economy because our people need to eat. You know, when everybody got jobs, families function better. When people got jobs, crime are down. When people got jobs, drug abuse is, is less. You follow. So if I care about the community, I'm going to hire people, okay, which would increase my overhead. But I'm investing in the community as opposed to if I go with automation using the robots, I'm making more money, but my community is suffering. So I think collectively as a people, we don't have to be totally against automation, but we do have to limit it to make sure our people can feed their families. Uh, well, hopefully it happens because a lot of people, I think, would always start be like, oh, I see a machine doing it. That's more money for me. So I guess it'll have to take all of us. Yes, it would have to take all of us. It got to be systematic. If it's not systematic, it's not going to work. In fact, that's why we struggle, black man, because we don't have anything. Nothing is done in the black community systematic. You can't. The only thing we do systematic in the black community is vote Democrat. Exactly. That's the, only, the other thing we do systematically in the black community is we waste our money. <laughs> yeah, black Joe folks Biden. can't wait to go vote. See, here, here, here's the thing about that. And um, here's the thing about that. Black people love distractions and we love entertainment. If you can distract me from my responsibilities and my reality, and if you can entertain me, I will love you. The church distracts, the church entertains. The Democratic Party distracts, the Democratic Party entertains. The black conscious community, the fake woke YouTube movement, they love to distract and they entertain. They're not building anything. They're not changing anything. They're not buying any institutions. They're not doing no nation building. It is all distraction and entertainment because that's what black people love. We always have to look for the silver lining in the cloud. And to me, social network has harmed us more than helped us as a people. As much as I love the fact that social network has saved me tens of thousands of dollars in marketing and advertising, I don't have to pay for marketing. I could just drop a flyer and it'll take care of itself. I love that. But at the end of the day, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat has done more to do what? Distract and entertain. We're not using these platforms to organize because we haven't organized anything. We're not using these platforms to invest because we haven't invested in anything. We're not using these platforms to build. No, we use these platforms for gossip, 
sensationalism, character assassination, and entertainment. So if they ban all of the conscious people off of social media, that would be a blessing. That would be a blessing. I don't want them banning Minister Farrakhan in isolation. But if they said we're getting rid of everyone who ascribes to a black consciousness, we're taking all of them off, that would be good. You know why? Because that would force us to get in the same room and work together. That would force us to put the phones and the laptops down and come together and organize like we used to do. That would force us to go back to our black study groups, which were destroyed by YouTube. YouTube destroyed the black study group movement. So guess what? I'm not against it. As long as they do it systematically. If they just going to cherry pick Minister Farrakhan, cherry pick the Prince of Pan-Africanism, cherry pick Claude Anderson, cherry pick Queen of Fool, then I got a problem with it. Okay, but if they're going to systematically wipe us out off of social network, good, because that will force us to go back to the streets and organize the way we used to.